I'm reading a text from the book of Joshua, chapter 19, if you have your Bible, and I'm just going to read two verses of Scripture for you that are listening to the broadcast. When they had made an end of dividing the land for inheritance by their coast, the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua the son of Nun among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even Timnath Sarah in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city, and he dwelt therein. Now I want you to notice those words that I had at the end. The city of Timnath Sarah, the finest spot in all the land. Joshua and Caleb were only the original two that came out of Egypt's bondage. The rest of them, their carcasses are bleached in the sands of the desert. They did not enter into the fullness of their promise because of a spirit of unbelief. Only Joshua and, and Caleb who were two of the original ten spies who went to spy out the land and Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. Joshua became the commander-in-chief and he led the new generation over Jordan's River into the Promised Land and he just finished dividing the inheritance for all of God's people. Thank God for a leader that can move you into your full inheritance. Thank God for it. And now the people are giving Joshua his inheritance. Caleb already got his inheritance. Caleb, 85 years of age, stood there in front of Joshua and said, Now therefore give me this mountain, which was Hebron. And I believe it's fitting that Timnath Sirah is also in Hebron. This is where the giants dwelt in Mount Ephraim. Mount Ephraim is a different mount than Hebron. Caleb got Mount Hebron. Mount Hebron. Joshua got Mount Ephraim. Two of the finest spots in the whole land. And it came to the men of faith who came back with a good report. I like that. Caleb said, now therefore give me this mountain. He said, God promised that every bit of ground that the soles of our feet shall tread upon, we shall possess it. Did you ever wonder reading this particular story that Joshua and Caleb were the last ones back? The other ten spies came back first. Joshua and Caleb, the reason why I believe they come back late was because they were busy laying down some footprints around Mount Hebron and Mount Mount e around Mount Ephraim. They wanted to find out where the giants were living because they knew since they were the strongest people in the land, they had the finest homes and they're going to make up their mind. They're going to have God's best. And they went up there and walked around that place. And when Joshua brought him into their inheritance, Caleb said, now therefore give me this mountain because 45 years ago I laid down some footprints and God's word cannot return unto him void. And I walked around that mountain and it is mine yeah. hallelujah yeah, and now Joshua has been given the city of the sun now, most of us we work hard in gloom city in fog town and I see some of you smiling because you know what I'm talking about some of you are carrying the load all the time. And if you can just get a two weeks vacation so you can head off for Florida. If I can just bask in the sun for a couple weeks out of the year, I'm happy. Not me, honey. I want to live there all the time, if you don't mind. That's the trouble with the church. We're content to have revival for two weeks out of the year. But God wants us to have revival 52 weeks out of the year. Can you shout amen, somebody? This tent 
may come down on Sunday, but I want you to know revival's going to continue in the churches of every one of these pastors. This revival doesn't have to stop, but God wants it to continue because we're moving into the city of the sun where we can enjoy all of its blessing. Every one of you that are listening to this broadcast, I want you to pack your bags. You're not going on a vacation, but we're moving. This is moving day. We're not going for a visit, but we're going to move into the city of the sun. I have found a place spiritually where we can arrive at and we can live there. We can dwell there. We can build a house there. And we're going to stay in that place until Jesus comes and moves us from one sun to another sun. Can you Shout yes, somebody. Hallelujah. I broke this thing down in four points. The first thing that I can find in the city of the sun is the presence of Christ. How many times have you seen Christians walking around with their chin hanging on their chest? They look like last year's bird nest. Have no joy whatsoever. And it looks like that Jesus left them. But I believe that there is a place in God where we can move, where we can enjoy His presence 24 hours a day. Can you shout amen? God never intended for you to just feel His presence on Sunday morning. But God wants you to have His presence on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, and all day Saturday, and all day Saturday. Sunday, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. I don't care whether you can feel him here or not, but he is here. We have the presence of Almighty God. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me, somebody? I'm talking about the presence of Christ. Even some of you who are in this tent tonight, you are saying, well, I can't feel nothing. Well, I don't care whether you can feel it or not. He's here anyhow. You can bank on it. He said, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You don't have to have a tent full of people to have his presence, but I can take another man and get out on the street corner. And Jesus said, in the middle of us, wherever two or three are, there I am. I'm reading from the book of Joshua. Uh, I wish I had time to finish all this. 19th chapter of Joshua. Let me go back to it. They had made an end of dividing the land for an inheritance by their coast. The children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, among them. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city, which he asked. Even Timnath, Sarah, and Mount Ephraim. And he built the city, and he dwelt therein. I believe it's time to move out of that mess you're in. A lot of people are saying, well, one of these days, when we all get to heaven, there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow. That may be true, honey, but I need some help right now. How many of you just like me, you need some help? This ain't television, holla yes! That's what I want to hear. I want them folks out there to know we got somebody here. Hallelujah. I want you to pack your belongings. We're going to move. We're going to move to the city of the sun. Where you can feel the presence of Christ. Can you shout yes? Jesus will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Do you know what else is there in the city of the sun? Divine healing. I want you to look at, look at it in the natural plane. When people go to the medical doctors and to their physicians, many times they will consult with them and they will tell them to move out of the north. Move out of this wet climate. 
Your arthritis won't do you any good until you get to Denver, Colorado, the mile high city where the sun is always shining. Move to Phoenix, Arizona where the temperatures are high and the atmosphere is dry. It's a dry heat, not wet, and you can't feel the arthritic pains. Is that true? But I want you to know in the spiritual God's got a city of the sun that you don't have to visit for a two week vacation but you can move there and live in not divine healing but in perfect health. This is a health city. Are you listening to me? There's a scripture that I wrote down that I like. Unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth to grow like calves of the stall. Hallelujah. The son of righteousness. Who's he talking about? What's his name? Say it out loud. I can't hear you. Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, shall arise with healing in His wings. Life and joy, the joy of the Lord. This is spiritual health. I want you to know, beloved, that God has made a provision not only for divine healing, but He has made a provision for you as His child to enjoy perfect health. Do you believe this? The Bible says, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elder of the church. Let him anoint with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. I would like to bring us back to this old-fashioned terminology of divine healing. We hear faith healing talked about so much. But I've come to tell you this is divine healing. Man has nothing to do with God's healing power. It is totally divine. God's the one that does the healing. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he'll be the same tomorrow. Can you shout yes? Yes. Phil Donahue called me on the phone before I went to do his particular program. He said, I want to do a preacher that's used in faith healing. I said, you'll have to find somebody else. I said, God uses me in divine healing. He said, I ain't never heard that term. Well, I said, you're hearing it now. I said, it's totally divine. I said, I couldn't heal a flea if it had a headache. I said, when God heals people, it's He that does the work. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He'll be the same tomorrow. Can you shout amen, somebody? And I come to let you people know that we can move to a place in the sun where you can stay well. God wants you well. But you'll never stay well while your feet are on the ground walking around in Gloom City. you got to come up a little higher and get out of the clouds out to where the sun is always shining. I used to tell a story when I was preaching in Chicago. I used to fly back to Newark, New Jersey. I'd have to catch a plane at four o'clock in the morning after a Saturday night service, getting out of service about one o'clock, getting to the hotel about two, then have to leave at three o'clock to get to O'Hare Airport. This one particular Sunday morning, it was cloudy and the and and the rains were coming down. And in my spirit, I was saying, Lord, fog in O'Hare. Don't let any planes go out. Let me stay here. You know, when you're in a mess, people like to stay there. Don't feel like doing anything. When you get up in the morning, sometimes you want to go right back to bed. Come on, holla ouch with me once in a while. I mean, amen. Isn't it true? When I looked out and saw the terrible weather and the fog and the clouds, I said, oh, Lord, I I didn't even have a smile. I was gloomy and everything. But I still took a shower and got dressed and went out to the airport, gave him a ticket, and I said, I hope it's grounded. He said, it's leaving on time. I said, just my luck. You ever feel that way? All of a sudden, I got on the plane, and that thing started taking off. 
And it wasn't 15 seconds that that jet got soaring through those clouds when all of a sudden it looked like somebody turned on a burst of light and we broke the clouds and hear the sun shining. And I woke up for the first time. I said, get out of here. I looked out the window and I couldn't even see Chicago. And I said, them poor saints got to live in that mess. Oh, no wonder Jesus said in the Word, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. You can get off of this ground and move into the city of the sun. There is a place in Christ where we can arrive where the sun is always shining. Get your feet off the ground and get your head in the sky. Can you shout amen, somebody? This is where healing is. This is where victory is. This is where joy is. But you have to get off the ground. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The promise to every one of us is, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. Not divine healing, but health. How in the world can I move to that place? You don't realize what you possess, beloved. I'm not talking about the geography of where your home is. But my Bible says the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, it dwells in you. Hallelujah. He doesn't pay you a visit every Sunday morning like you go to church on Sunday morning. But He has come to live on the inside of you. The Son of Righteousness lives on the inside of your life. You have perpetual health because of the Christ that abides within your life. The same Spirit that got Jesus out of His grave on Easter Sunday morning dwells in you. When that devil tries to put something on you, all you got to do is get that resurrection power to work and the sugar diabetes got to vanish, the headache got to go because greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me somebody?